Trader here. Today we're going to be doing a quick video on the best dog bed for golden doodles. Now, a lot of people might think that this is a golden doodle, but this is my standard poodle Enzo. He's the closest thing that I have to a doodle, so I figured I'd bring him out for this video. Now, um, the bed that I'm going to be recommending to my clients with a golden doodle 99% of the time is going to be the Amazon Basics Elevated Cooling Bed. Now, there's a couple different reasons for that, um, and I'll get into that here in a second, but now, um, obviously, Golden Doodles come in all different shapes and sizes, so these are the two sizes that I probably use the most frequently with Doodles, which is the large and the extra large, but there are five different sizes, and I know that there's medium and you know smaller Doodles out there, so I'll put links in the video description to all the different sizes, so that way you can pick whatever one works best for your Golden Doodle. Now, as far as why I like these beds so much, especially for Golden Doodles, is one, they're very inexpensive. Um, compared to foam and fabric beds and orthopedic beds and all that kind of stuff, um, these are super, super cheap. So I'm definitely not saying they're the fanciest beds in the world. I'm not saying that they look like amazing, cool, nice beds. Um, you know, they're pretty basic standard beds, but, um, but for how inexpensive they are, I think that there's a lot of value in them. And now the second thing that I like about them is probably the biggest appeal for a golden doodle is going to be the cooling aspect of it. That this, um, uh, fabric is really breathable and there's kind of like a breeze that can come underneath and up that kind of helps our doodles or any dog with a really thick fur uh, maintain a, a more comfortable temperature. Now, um, we can also like put these beds, like our, you know, in some cases we can take these beds and put them over an air conditioning vent and that can add like an even more, you know, uh, deliberate cold air to them. You probably don't have to do that, but, but I definitely have seen people do that in the past. Now, um, we can also kind of get the best of both worlds that let's say, you know, our golden doodle tends to get hot, but they do like all that extra cushion where a lot of times I'll just throw some blankets on here on one half of it. So then if they want the blankets, they can kind of bunch them up and lay on them. Um, but if they don't, they just push them to the side and they kind of sleep on the more ventilated side. So, um, so that's probably the next really big appeal is the cooling side of it. Now, um, the next thing is gonna be like how easy they are to clean. You know, if your Golden Doodle is anything like my Poodle um, or Golden Doodles I've worked with in the past, they are running around outside and I like swimming and all that kind of stuff. So these beds can get dirty pretty quickly. So a typical like fabric bed or um, foam type bed, if our dogs have an accident or get sick and throw up on it or something like that, um, it's very, very difficult to clean that bed to its like original state. So these beds are super, super easy because there's no foam or anything that will absorb that kind of gross stuff. Um, all we have to do is just spray it down with some disinfectant. We can wipe it down with a rag and you're pretty much good to go. And then if we are throwing extra blankets and stuff like that on the bed, you can just throw those in the wash once a week. And those are going to last a lot longer than a, a dog bed where a, like a foam dog bed, because those types of beds you really don't want to be washing every week or you're really going to drastically shorten the lifespan. So, so that's probably the next thing is just how easy it is to clean. Now, most golden doodles are not supposed to shed, but I have definitely seen some that do shed. So if you happen to have like a Roomba or, or uh, you know, some type of vacuum that you're using to clean up after your dog, um, these beds, you know, one, a Roomba can go underneath them, which is pretty nice. Um, or you can use like a vacuum attachment to vacuum up some of the dirt and stuff that kind of falls through the bed um, uh, over time. Now, as far as training is concerned, um, a really, really big part of my dog training is teaching dogs what we call the spot command or the place command, which is teaching them to lay down and stay on a bed. And um, a lot of times I think that puppies and some dogs that are struggling with the concept, the elevated bed can kind of help them connect the dots a little bit faster. 
I'm definitely not saying you would need this type of bed to do that type of training, but I definitely have seen that I think it helps especially puppies pick up on the concept a little bit faster because they have to like step off of it in order to get off of the bed. Um, and now one other thing as how it's like related to training and things like that is going to be um, the level of chew proof that I'm, I'm not going to say these beds are entirely chew proof. Um, you know, there, I'm going to do videos down the road of beds that are a little bit more marketed to like a really heavy destructive chewer. Um, but these beds are going to be a lot better than like a fabric or foam type bed where like a lot of those types of beds. If a puppy even starts ripping one little hole and all this foam starts coming out, it has basically just started the process of them destroying the bed altogether. Where here on these beds, one, there's no stuffing for them to rip out. And I think that there's not as much gratification in them ripping up these beds. So they just don't, they tend not to do it quite so much. Um, and then two, there's really not a lot of areas on the bed for the dog to successfully start to rip it apart. So, so not entirely chew proof, but definitely way better than like a fabric or foam type bed. Um, so those are really all the things that I think about when I'm recommending these beds to my clients with golden doodles. So why don't we take one of these beds apart so I can show you what it's like to put it back together and then we'll probably wrap up the video from there. Okay guys, so um, this is for the most part what it looks like when everything is taken apart. You know, if you lay everything out, when you get it out of the box. Now, the only thing I didn't do is I just left this piece in uh, just because it's a little redundant and I don't want this video to be longer than what it needs to be. Uh, but I just left this side in because we're going to be showing you what it looks like when we put that one together. Okay, now in the box, it's going to come with a uh, tool that you can use to put this thing together so you don't need to go out and buy anything. Now, the first step is going to be putting all the different poles in. Okay, so um, the longest poles are going to be in the front and back. There you go. Okay, and then the shorter poles are going to be more uh, lengthwise. Once you're going to get that pushed in, then we're going to be putting these in. Now, the one thing you have to be careful of with this is that you'll you'll see one side has a little bit of like an indent in it. Okay, I'll bring it a little closer so you can see. Okay, this little indented piece should be facing out. Okay, so when you put it in, just make sure that the indented side is facing away from the bed. Okay, and then there's also a little bit of like an arc on this uh, horizontal pole that will line up with the shape of the inside of this piece. Okay. And I'm going to start by just using my fingers and I'll probably tighten everything once I get the whole bed kind of put together. And making sure that the little indented piece is facing out. I think the first few times I put this together, I did it backwards and had to redo the whole thing. Okay. All right, and then like I said at the beginning of the video, the other side I just left put together. Um, so that is going to be a little bit faster for me to show you how to this thing together. And pretty much all the different sizes uh, have the same very, very similar assembly. This the biggest bed, this extra large one, does have a, one extra component to it that the other ones do not have. Okay, and I'll show you guys that here in a second. 
Okay, so now that I've got the bulk of it put together, now I'm going to go through and tighten these with the wrench. Because the first time I did it, I was trying to tighten them all like one at a time as I was putting it together. And it just um, kind of throws things out of whack a little bit. So that's why I recommend only kind of half screwing them first until everything's put together and then go through and tighten everything. And something I did not point out earlier in the video is that uh, you can actually get a green version of this. So for whatever reason you prefer that, you can definitely do that. These um, light gray kind of gets stained a little bit from the uh, Georgia red clay. So the green might have worked a little better if I was worried about that, but I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Now, if this were any of the smaller models, that would pretty much be it. But the extra large model comes with this extra piece here. Okay, that's just an extra, like an added support. Okay, so basically we just put these on. And this is gonna go underneath in the middle. This part can be a little bit tricky. Actually. So we're gonna lock this in on one side. Then we're gonna lock it in on this side. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about the elevated uh, or the Amazon basic elevated cooling dog bed. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.